Welcome back YouTube. Today I'm going to tell you why the Artemis program is dead. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of details on why and how it's going to happen. I'll give you my prediction on how it's going to play out. But first we're going to start with some facts from the NASA report on why it chose SpaceX. Stick around, it's going to be really, really good. <laughs> Let me give you some facts on what NASA said in their report and why it chose SpaceX and why from that point on Artemis doesn't make any sense. So first off, technical analysis of SpaceX. NASA liked a lot about SpaceX. It liked their cargo. The cargo hold is big. It can carry bulky items with weird shapes. It can carry a hundred times more than what NASA asked for. It has two independent airlocks, two independent life support systems. Those two independent life support systems can stay on for a very extended time as long as the vehicle has extra propellant. That was one of the safety features that NASA really enjoyed and it's much more than what they asked for. SpaceX has provided a plan on rapid evacuation and leaving the moon in case something happened again with the extra propellant that is in the rocket. Now, some technical issues that NASA had concerns with. The first concern was that the crew would be stationed 30 meters above the surface of the moon and it would require an elevator. Apparently, they talked it out with SpaceX. SpaceX showed them some designs and ideas on how this is going to work and NASA's fears were allayed, especially given the fact that SpaceX offered to have four astronauts instead of two, given the two separate life support systems and two separate airlocks. The other main issue that NASA had with SpaceX's plan was orbital refueling. Apparently they talked a lot with SpaceX about it. Their, concer their concerns were with the fact that it has to be done in orbit, with the fact that it requires kind of a concert of events to happen in a rapid succession, meaning SpaceX has to send a whole bunch of ships, right, one after another, it has to reuse them and refurbish them. But as NASA says, given the testing that has already been done, given the designs that were provided by SpaceX and the specifications, NASA's fears were allayed, mostly because none of the mission critical factors will happen before Starship destined for the moon is fully up in low Earth orbit, is fully refueled, tested, life support is tested, guidance is tested, everything would be tested before the first astronauts have to leave Earth. That was one of the biggest concerns for NASA and apparently SpaceX was able to work it out to where this is not going to be an issue. What NASA didn't like about the other landers. First off, both landers only offered two astronauts versus the four that SpaceX is offering, but that wasn't that important. The important part was for the Dynetics lander, it was literally only a lander. It could land on the moon, but it would be too heavy to get out of the moon. It had negative mass, and even according to NASA, it, once they read the schematics and the details of the Dynetics lander, they thought that Dynetics is understating the actual weight of their lander. So Dynetics essentially was disqualified due to the fact that it only offered a lander, but nothing that can actually leave the moon. The national team led by Blue Origin there were two main issues. The first issue was the sustainability of the lander. Like I said in my previous episode, NASA wanted those landers to be used for other purposes other than just being built solely for NASA. What the national team offered was a lander for two people and it told them three years later they're going to try to sell them another one for four people that's basically twice the size. NASA didn't like that because apparently that lander would only be built for NASA. The other issue, which would have been resolvable had the national team's design been accepted, is that the national team asked for money up front without the work being done. And this was specifically stated in the contract that NASA would not be doing that. Those two issues were the main reasons why the national team was not selected. Now, 
on to what NASA said about the Artemis program. First off, I want to tell you, NASA didn't say anything directly about Artemis. However, they left some snippets inside that report that will tell you how they're heading towards not using Artemis. And I'll give you one more piece of news that came out last year, but I hadn't caught it until now, that confirms that Artemis is dead. So first off, according to NASA, the Starship would be capable of bringing back a whole bunch of science to Earth meaning it's a hundred ton cargo hold could carry water ice rocks dust whatever nasa deems valuable from the moon would be able to be carried back to earth on starship with one major caveat and that caveat is that in the current plan it would have to be docked to the orion capsule from there whatever could be fit into the orion capsule and that is what nasa would send back to earth essentially NASA could get back to Earth 100 tons worth of stuff from the moon if Orion wasn't the return vehicle home, but because it is, they can get less than 1% of that. The other issue was NASA reviewed the technical details for Starship. What they said they really liked is that they really liked the option of having the astronauts leave after Starship's life support refueling and everything is done in low earth orbit they state that that being done in low earth orbit is way less riskier than doing something like that in lunar orbit now let's put those two things together nasa thinks that starship docking with crew in low earth orbit would be safer than something docking with starship in lunar orbit they don't say that directly, but you kind of have to read between the lines. Number two, what they say is, if we don't have to use the Orion capsule for the trip back to Earth, we can bring back a hundred times the science that we would bring otherwise. And the news that came at the end of 2020, but I didn't even realize it happened until very recently, is that Russia was one of the partners that was supposed to build the space station orbiting the moon. That space station is where the Orion would be docked to and where the landers would dock to. It's called the Lunar Gateway. This is the whole Artemis plan. You have a capsule to take you from Earth to the lunar station. You have a lunar lander. You dock them together. You transfer the astronauts and they go to the moon and back. Now. Russia has pulled out. Not only have they pulled out, they have teamed up with China in building stuff directly on the moon. So in the situation we find ourselves in now is NASA has to pick up way more funding for the Lunar Gateway. A gateway that would be useless because Starship would have life support systems and everything tested in low Earth orbit where if something goes wrong, we can have extra vehicles to go and save the crew, equipment and whatnot. Versus NASA has to now spend billions more to build a lunar gateway. Supposedly use the SLS rocket to send all that equipment to lunar orbit. And then perform risky docking maneuvers in lunar orbit where if something goes wrong, nothing can be done. And all of that just to dock to a starship that was live crew capable directly from Earth to the moon. This is not going to be making sense. But furthermore, the reason why they put those sentences in their report is because they know the politicians, the ones that have received a whole bunch of money from the old school government contractors, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, ULA, Dynetics, Blue Origin, all of those, they knew they would be up in arms over the fact that SpaceX was the only chosen program. So... What I suggest is going to happen is this. We're going to have on one side NASA and Elon Musk's tweets stating how transferring crew in low Earth orbit and then sending them directly to the moon would be much safer than transferring crew to Starship in lunar orbit. Second of all, they will also say how much cheaper that would be, how much more cargo they would be able to bring there and how much more cargo they would be able to bring back. 
And as far as cargo going to the moon, there is one big caveat that nobody seems to be talking about. The reason why all the devices we sent in space are extremely expensive is because anything that you want to send from Earth to space becomes is extremely expensive to transport. It needs to be re-engineered to be able to fit in those small capsules, and it needs to be re-engineered to be as light as possible. Basically, you're getting something, re-engineering it completely, and making one copy of it, which obviously would cost millions, and we send it in space. What Starship offers to NASA, specifically for sending equipment to the moon, is to be able to use Earth-designed equipment with very minimal modifications to work in vacuum, and just send it to the moon. Much cheaper, much easier process. And timing of completing certain devices is not going to be of the issue because we already have them. Imagine we have to drill on the surface of the moon to see what's underneath deep in the crust. If you remember the movie with Bruce Willis, they brought oil rig equipment and put it on a rocket and send it to an asteroid. Essentially, that is what NASA will be able to do with this if they choose to not stuff everything in one right. And they don't have to stuff everything in one right because essentially they're buying the Starship from SpaceX, even though SpaceX will be operating it. And they can send it back and forth between low Earth orbit and the moon many, many times. This will allow transporting heavy, weirdly shaped equipment to the moon, something that the current Artemis program will not allow. Furthermore, anything that we would be extracting back is not going to be sent. Now, that's one aspect of the whole thing. The other thing that NASA states is for their long-term mission to Mars, which is what Congress has mandated NASA to do, is they will be able to learn a lot from SpaceX for lower orbit refueling, for reusability, for propulsion, and a whole bunch of other things that SpaceX is doing completely different from NASA. So what NASA says in their contract is we're going to give our contract a whole bunch of human support from our engineers and our scientists to help build the device. And what NASA says in their report is that at the same time, NASA will be learning a lot from SpaceX. So imagine the Congress discussions. On one side, we have to pay for our Temis more than what we designed because Russia pulled out and is joining with China. On the other side, oh, and, and this would mean more delays more money and going to the moon much later than what is designed right now on the on one side we spend a lot more money we delay the project by a lot we know we're going to be getting way less science back than what than what is possible meanwhile russia and china will be establishing base on the moon option number two is nasa tells them it's safer to do it with starship in low earth orbit we're going to get more science we can bring there a lot more equipment so we can compete with Russia and China. It will be cheaper. We're going to learn a, a lot about going to Mars. And in the background, Elon Musk will be tweeting. And this whole thing will play out on the background of SpaceX sending astronauts to the International Space Station, starships getting more and more test flights and getting better and better at flying, flipping the belly and landing and getting cheaper and cheaper. So basically what we have is Artemis, as the way it was designed with Russian assistance, is officially no more. Russia pulled out. If Congress and NASA insist on having something in lunar orbit, it would make much, much more sense just to buy a second lunar starship, orbit the moon while the first one is on the moon, giving them redundancy, giving, giving them a lot more safety if something were to go down wrong on the surface and giving them a lot more cargo capacity because while one ship is on the moon, the other one can be traveling back to low Earth orbit, transferring stuff and going back there. It just gives them a lot more flexibility and capability compared with the lunar gateway space station. It would be cheaper, it would be safer, it will not involve the Russians, and it will help the, the United States in the new space race that has just begun between the United States and Europe versus China and Russia. This is why Artemis is dead. It hasn't been announced officially. It has to happen in a congressional fight between the old school government leaders that are not really interested in 
completing anything. They're just interested in getting the money and NASA and SpaceX on the other side. And one more point. When we had the space race, the government contractors were essentially extension of the government trying to win a race. After the space race, those same contractors just became jobs. Those jobs were provided by Congress, and that's why the whole space program is spread over 50 states, and that's why it's so expensive. But this is when we're not in a race. Now we're in a new race. Again, the efforts will have to be concentrated much more in one area, in one contractor in this case, with much more focus on beating the Russian and the Chinese. This is how NASA, the public, Elon Musk, will be pressuring Congress to just cut out the leechers, take their lobbying money, but forget about them, and just move on and win the next space race. I hope I connected some dots for you. My name is Nasco. This is The Great Reset. Thank you very much for all my new subscribers. Please hit the like button if you like my content. Comment down below. And have a great day.